Welcome to week three of the Tinsel Tree Quilt Along. You already have your triangles cut and your layout complete. This week we're going to sew the triangles together into rows and sew the bottom three sections of the quilts. I have one method, Jennifer has a different method, and you may have yet a third method. So you might want to watch both of the videos just to see if you can pick up any hints that might help you complete the task. Okay, so the first thing we will do to piece the tinsel tree quilt together is piece the lower three sections. And this is the right hand section of my quilt. I have all of the rows laid out. I've pieced from the bottom up. I've got these rows done. I'm just gonna do my last row. So I go ahead and pick up my entire row from left to right, keeping them in order and keeping them so the grain lines on the top and the bottom because you wanna sew these bias edges together first bias likes to be sewn to bias and it kind of will get a little wonky if you do a bias to a straight edge on these and you want to get rid of your bias first anyway because it'll make sewing these rows together a lot more stable okay so I stack these up left to right so I'll take them off in the same order and I know this is my leftmost pair and I just flip them right sides together and match them up exactly so all the edges and all the corners match. And then I'll just sew with a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'll pull off my next pair to the left to the right, right sides together. Match up all the sides. And I'll just keep feeding in the pairs. And then when you cut them without the blunt tip, this end piece ends up being a quarter of an inch too long. So we'll just deal with that um, once it's sewn together. So I just match this corner. So see how that goes. So this looks like it matches up, but you'll have a quarter of an inch excess. You'll see that when I press it. Here are my pairs. I know this is my left side because my right side has the end piece on it. This way. I like to set my stitches first with a quick press. And I press to one side. So I need these sides to be the opposite of the last row I did. So this is the row right below this. All of my seams go to the left. So on this one, all of my seams will go to the right. And it's important to make sure you maintain that all across your quilt top so that when you add the final rows across the top, they're all going in one direction. So I just pay attention to that. So there are my pairs, done with this now. And then see how this last piece is a quarter of an inch longer? That's normal, just cut that off. I just eyeball it. And now I'm going to put my pairs together. So I'll go right sides together. The pointy ends should match, and then you should, this little knot here should be at a quarter of an inch. And again on this one, my corners here match and then this V here right at that point of the V should be a quarter of an inch from this side. So I get this quarter of an inch lined up. I get this started just with a couple of stitches 
and then I match the bottom here. Do it again. I've got a quarter of an inch line here. So I'll put this against the side. And then that little point of that V is a quarter of an inch from this straight line. I'll tap down the beginning. I'll keep my needle down so it holds that in place while I match up these two ends, should be right on top of each other. Now you don't have to press in between. Once you're done with pairs, you don't have to press in between. Just open them up. Same thing. There's my row, and I'm pressing it to the right. So I'm going to set these seams that I just stitched. And then when I press, I just use the side of the iron to catch my seam, straighten it out, and go over. Straight out with the iron, and then press over. Now since we have the full points on here, there's a lot of bulk in the seam allowance. So I go ahead and trim off my dog ears. And then on these, I just go perpendicular to that. I'll trim that off. I won't leave these for Jennifer. Clean up my mess. Okay, so now we're ready to sew the rows together. And I'll just sew these two rows together. Actually, I'll do this one because it's trimmed. Okay, since I've sewn, I've pressed everything to one side. And this is why I do that. So when I Put these right sides together. I can just nestle these seams and I feel this seam and then I feel this seam and make sure everything's locked in and then that point will match. Every other row you'll have the luxury of this little cross so you know where your point is. So again you'll make sure it's a quarter of an inch for that little notch. got it tacked down. I'm going to check and make sure I can feel these are in place. And once I can feel that those are in place, I'll continue on. So I just go one triangle at a time. And then same thing, make sure I can feel these two seams matching, these two seams matching. And then on this end, I just want to make sure I can feel this match all the way down, and then I know these end pieces will match.
And then when I press these, I um, press the seam allowance still to one side so that that way when I go to press my sections together, I can nestle the seams. And I know my tree, I've pressed with the seams up. So on this one, I want to press the seams down. There you go. So I'll just continue that until my whole section is pieced. Hi, this is Jennifer, and I'm going to show you today how I sew my rows together. I do mine a little bit differently than Trish did, so um, take a peek at both versions and see which one you like, or do it however you do it. Anyhow, so first I've got my top row of the left section done, and I am um, now working on the second row down. So what I do, I used the, the notch, the, the creative grid ruler that has the notch at the top. So it uh, helps when you're lining up the straight grain. It helps a lot because you know opposite of that is always the straight grain. And you always want to sew bias to bias on this. It'll help in the end when you're joining the rows, you'll be joining on the straighter grain. So to sew my pairs together, you just line them up. You ignore those notches all together and just line them up. And if you haven't cut as accurately as you want, it's okay. Just, just do it the best you can. Bias is a little for, forgiving and uh, just center it and it'll be good in the end. Okay, so I'm gonna come over to the machine and sew this with a quarter of an inch. If you have a quarter of an inch foot, just, um, it flipped up a little bit, so I wanted to make sure that was under the needle. Okay, so I'm just sewing along. If you have a quarter of an inch foot, obviously you're just gonna go right along the edge. These are larger pieces, so sometimes they wanna shift a little. If that bothers you, you can pin. I don't pin, I just keep shifting with my fingers if I have to. Okay, so there's my first two pieces joined. Now, this is where I do things quite a bit differently. I like to press my seams open. And I do this for several reasons. One is bulk. I like how flat it lies. And two, we'll talk about more when I join the rows, I can really see where the points match. Now, because I used the, the triangle ruler with the blunt nose, it, um, you can see when you press it open, it just makes a continuous line right there. You don't need to trim dog ears or anything. Okay, so I have my first unit together. Now I'm gonna go back and grab the end unit and I'm gonna go ahead and sew that one on now. So now I have the, the um, little dog ear sticking up and this is why you don't wanna trim those. You line it up perfectly with that dog ear and down here at this end, you'll have your perfect little quarter inch with your little notch and your V, or your, um, it makes the V and that's where you start sewing. down to the bottom because they're lined up perfectly it'll sew off right in that V again so you know you did your quarter of an inch right okay so now I again press open I like to finger press a little bit to get it started makes it easier in the long run the only thing you have to consider when um, sewing your seams open is sometimes your iron will catch on that and flip the previous side open or want to close it up. So just keep an eye on that. And it's perfectly flat and ready to go. Okay, so I keep going. Again, now, since we did the first two, since the, the only time you line them up perfectly 
on top of each other as with the first two. This one will definitely have the notch and the dog ear that you line up. So now we're gonna go back and sew. This is a perfect quilt to do leaders and enders, if you're a leaders and enders, because there's a lot of short seams. You can get a lot of leaders and enders done. I just don't, I'm never organized enough to do leaders and enders. So I just use little um, scraps of fabric. They look like octopuses, octopi. Okay, so that's sewn. Again, pressing them open. If you have long fingernails, it helps. If you don't, you can use an emery board, emery stick to open that up. Okay. And there's no need to set seams before you press open because it kind of does it as you're pressing open. Okay, so here's the last one I'm gonna do for this row. Since this is just a section, it won't have an end piece on the right side. Because this is the section that's gonna go on the left side of the tree. So rather than doing it in pairs, I like to do it in one continuous row, like this, even the long ones, because it helps me stay organized. I get, it gets confusing, especially if you don't have the notch on the end, it gets confusing keeping the um, stray grain. So I like doing it in one long row. And then I know that I'm matching the right pairs together as well. Okay. So here is my second row, ready to go. So now let's join the two rows. So something, I'm a pinner. My philosophy is proper pin eaten prevents poor performance. And so I'm a pinner. Some people aren't, you know, follow your heart, whatever you wanna do. So for this, when you pin, because you have those little dog ears, again, they're just gonna line up perfectly. I always take a peek and make sure the point of the, this side, this, the top block meets the point of the bottom row and that the dog ears line up. And then I put a pin right there and that's usually sufficient. On this end, I just pin it so you can see a quarter of an inch of the dog ear sticks out. And I do like to pin that last one. You don't really have to, but it just, when you're sewing it, just makes it easy so you don't have to be continually shifting. So again, I'm gonna line up the dog ear and make sure the points match and they do and I'm gonna pin. I like to pin behind where it sews. So as it's sewing, it kind of pushes it in towards it. It just seems to make it go better. And then here, it's lined up fine. Okay, so let's sew this, these two rows together. coming up on that and it the seam flipped up a little bit. I think my quarter inch foot does that. I don't know if everybody has that problem or not, but I seem to have it a lot. So I have my, my uh, emery stick, orange stick. So again, I'm coming up on my and I kind of hold it down and keep going. And since I pressed open, there's not a lot of bulk there. 
it doesn't put much stress on any stress on your machine at all. Okay, so I get down to the end and just sew off, making sure it hits that quarter of an inch dog ear. And this is the moment of truth when you press it open and you'll see how good you did with getting those points to stay or to be revealed. Okay, so I open it up. All right. So I kind of guide it open before I get there with the iron. At this bulk, see there's one of those seams that wanted to jump up. I just kind of, I'm pointing down with the tip a little bit to get this um, trained, so to speak, to fall open. And then I go along there. Okay, so once it's kind of open, then I can go back and more with a, a pressing motion than an ironing motion. I'm going more up and down. And then I can check and make sure all the seams are open. And then I can really press. Okay, so let me turn it over and I'll press from the top. I have a little friend here who wants to help. Okay. So there you go. That's how I sew my triangles and join the rows. So there you go. That's all of our knowledge on how to piece triangles together. So go off, get your three sections completed, and we'll meet you back here next week when we'll talk about how to complete the topper. And of course, we both have different methods for everything. So who knows what you'll learn next week.